Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another meal prep video. This is going to be a really just quick and easy one. I have all my stuff already all laid out for the things that I need to prep. This is one thing I suggest that you do get everything out so you don't have to stop and get anything including any containers, any tools you need. Just get it all out. Then you're not searching for it and all of that. So I have my crock pot ready here or my instant pot because I'm going to use that for some hard boiled eggs. I have my crock pot over here because I'll be using that for a recipe here in a second. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So like I said, my whole goal now for meal prepping is to make it super easy for myself. I'm only prepping for myself since all my kids have all moved out. My husband doesn't, doesn't eat usually the types of things that I eat, but I do try to prep things and just show you guys how easy it is to prep. The first thing we're going to do is one of my lunches and dinners, either one throughout the week is going to be some chicken and gravy in the crock pot. That's a recipe I have made throughout my entire journey on Weight Watchers. I love it. It's very, very Weight Watcher friendly. Um, let me go ahead and show you how to put it together. These are the ingredients. So, so easy, y'all. First thing we want to do is we're going to season our chicken breasts. I think one mistake that a lot of people will make, and I'm not saying everybody, but I think a mistake that is made sometimes is that the meat that goes in the crock pots are not seasoned, and it really does make a difference um, to do so. So I like to just put my seasoning on pretty thickly since it's going to be, you know, in the crock pot. And I, for this recipe, I just use pepper and garlic powder. I'm not using salt purposely because the gravy packets and the, the cream of chicken soup both have quite a bit of sodium and salt. So I don't think salt is needed on the chicken. So I'm just going to use just pepper and garlic powder. And like I said, I'm just generously seasoning it. So highly recommend you'll notice a huge difference in all of your crock pot meals if you season every kind of layer of your recipe. So this may seem like a lot, but again, remember it's sitting in some liquid for a long time. And then next thing we're gonna do, I have two cups of water here. And to that, I'm gonna add the two packets of the gravy mix. And I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions on gravy mixes, but honestly, I have always, I mean, my entire life, <laughs> if we're younger, gravy mixes, you know, it's just what you use. Just makes them easy. That's what they're there for. Yes, they have a lot of ingredients in them that people don't like, and I'm sure you can find some maybe healthier versions, but I'm just all about making things easy. I work a lot, and I work outside the home. So for me and for a lot of people, just convenience does really help. Now, I always choose to make use the healthy request cream of chicken soup. I like it a lot better, and I feel like the macros are very similar to the 98% fat-free. I actually think the macros are better on the Healthy Request because it does have lower fat in it. Um, so it's just up to you. You can use the 98% fat-free, the regular cream of chicken, whatever you can find in your area. Um, now, the yogurt and the beans, we're going to put those in later at the very end. So just kind of push those off to the side, and we'll need them here in a little bit. So I did spray some cooking spray into my pan here and I'm just going to add the chicken and then just any seasoning that's on there and then we're just going to pour the gravy on top and this is it this is all y'all and this has the most amazing flavor so you can cook this on high for three to four hours which is what I'm doing or on low for six to eight hours really depends on your crock pot you all know your crock pots better than I do so Whatever works for you, just put the lid on, let it sit there, and then move on with your day. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is going to be some mashed cauliflower. Now, I forgot to buy plain um, almond milk or fat-free half and half, and I forgot to buy another thing of yogurt. So this is brand new to me. Never used cottage cheese for rice cauliflower before. We'll see if it works. And I'll tell you guys right now, it did. I tasted it. It does work. I have some garlic and some pepper as well. There's a lot of ways to make mashed cauliflower. I've showed you guys a lot of different ways, but typically that uses yogurt and either fat-free half and half or almond milk, but I only had vanilla almond milk and no half and half. So we're going to try the cottage cheese. So I did put the um, rice cauliflower in the microwave for six minutes, have some chives here. So, put the, so that is totally cooked through rice cauliflower. Um, I added in a huge heaping um, spoonful of garlic. You guys know garlic. I love it. Just put in some chives in there. 
And then I'm going to add some pepper in there. Again, I don't use salt because I do feel like cottage cheese is a little bit salty to me. I don't know. Maybe that's just my taste buds. Now, I have a cup of cottage cheese here, but I'm just going to start off with half of that. And I suggest you do that because all cottage cheese has different consistency. The good culture cottage cheese tends to be a little bit drier. The fat-free tends to be a little bit more liquidy. So just, I would start off with a half a cup and just go from there. Now, I did end up putting the entire cup in there, but just be careful of that and just kind of do what you need and just blend and go, blend and go. Um, so here is how mine turned out and look at that consistency. It came out so good. I did try it. It tastes really good y'all. Um, I can taste the cottage cheese. So I know some people are like, oh, you can't take taste cottage cheese in that. I can taste that this was made with cottage cheese, but it doesn't taste any different than the ones that are made with Greek yogurt. In my opinion, just has that tangy kind of taste to it. But I'll be using this for that chicken and gravy. And also I'm having pork chops for dinner tonight. So I'm going to have that on the side of my pork chops. I will have the recipe typed out below for you. Next up, we're going to make a blueberry lemon syrup that I'm going to use for pancakes that I'm going to have for breakfast a couple days. So here's my ingredients. I picked up this lemon extract at Grocery Outlet a while back. It was like 99 cents, and I had to pick it up because I figured, oh, at some point, I want, I'll want, i need lemon extract. And I saw it in my cupboard when I went to go grab for the vanilla extract to put in this recipe, and I'm like, ooh, blueberries and lemon. That is the best combination, in my opinion. I love that combination. This is so easy, you guys. So first up, I'm going to get my cornstarch slurry ready. So I'm going to... I. I need to get some more measuring spoons. I do not have a teaspoon measuring spoon. It broke a long time ago. So I have my half teaspoon here. So I have to do four of these to make two teaspoons of cornstarch. And then we want four teaspoons of water. And we're just gonna mix that up. So that's ready to go when it's time to add that to our fruit syrup. Now, like I said, I have some Premier Protein pancakes that I wanna have for breakfast a couple days. I have two servings left. So I'm going to make enough of this to go on that, and I'll have some left over. This is also really good on yogurt, like plain non-fat Greek yogurt, but this would be great on lemon yogurt, and I actually have some lemon yogurt. Um, so I also added in there a quarter cup of water and a quarter cup of pure sweetener, but use whatever kind of sweetener you like, and I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I will have this recipe typed out down below, so no worries on trying to remember everything. And then, you all know I don't usually measure vanilla, but when I'm using any kind of other extract, I have to measure because I'm so heavy-handed on extracts. So you want one teaspoon of lemon extract. Or if you're just using vanilla, one teaspoon of vanilla or whatever extract you're using. Get creative. Almond extract is also really good in these types of things, but if you can get your hands on some lemon, highly recommend, recommend it because I took a taste of this after I got done making it and it was so phenomenal. Um, so what you're going to do is stir all that up really well, bring it to a boil and kind of let it cook up a little bit. Now some people when they make kind of a fruit syrup, they at this point where it's boiling, boiling like this, then you could smash up the berries. I personally like it to be super chunky. So I'm not going to smash up the berries. So at this point you want to add in your slurry and then just give that a stir. And then I'm going to turn this down to simmer and just kind of allow it to thicken up a little bit. Then I'll completely remove it from the heat and let it sit there and it gets so thick. So let me show you as I'm pouring this in this jar. And y'all, I'm very proud of myself because I was really taking a risk pouring this into this jar because you all know how clumsy I am and messy. So this turned out perfectly, but look at that. Imagine this on some yogurt or on some pancakes. And you guys will see my What I Eat in a Day video where I'll have this and I'll show it on top of my pancakes and y'all will be jealous. So you have to make this. Now this thickened up really, really well. So um, this will be really good. So again, I will have this recipe typed out down below. But highly recommend this. You can use this with any kind of frozen fruit. You could do mixed berries, whatever you like. It is so easy. comes together so quick. And look how thick that is. Um, now I need to cut up my veggies, which you guys know I normally do that in the beginning of my prep, but I did not need them for anything for this prep. And my eggs, it's perfect timing to cook my eggs at the same time I'm doing my veggies, so I can get time to get all of my prep done. So I'm going to do six eggs today, add about a cup of water to my Instant Pot, 
And then I'm going to use the steam setting. I do mine the 555 method. So it's five minutes on the steam setting. Make sure your little thingy's closed. So five minutes on the steam setting. And then um, I just use the steam vegetables. And then I change the time to five minutes, which you can't see the numbers very well on these videos. I don't know why. Hit start and then let that go. And then you'll let it natural release for five minutes. And then I'll show you the next step. But while those are cooking, we're going to go ahead and do our veggies. So I have my containers here with a half of a piece of paper towel. We have my um, little chopper thingy right there. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and start with my bell peppers. I like to have bell peppers every week. I throw them in everything. I just throw them. And I don't cook mine up. I know there's some people who kind of cook up the, their veggie mixes. I don't just because I like raw bell pepper and so I like to throw it just in my salads and stuff so for me I just if I'm going to use it in like an egg scramble or a bowl or something then I just take some out throw it in with the meat that I'm having in my bowl or throw it in my eggs <clears throat> whatever I'm going to have it with but I do like to have it raw for my just like my side salads with my dinners and stuff and um, my this chopper makes it so easy it's kind of a pain sometimes. I have a super old one. I've had this thing forever. Um, I just got it off of Amazon. But this actually worked pretty good. I'm getting kind of used to using it again because it's just one of those things where it's like it's such a pain to clean that I didn't have it out for the longest time. Um, but I um, did not get any zucchini this week. Typically, I'll have zucchini with my veggie mix. But the zucchinis were so tiny and they were just, they were like $1.99 a pound for these little tiny itty bitty zucchinis. And I just, I just wasn't impressed by them. So I decided just to skip a week of zucchinis and just, I'm going to go to a different grocery store next week, I think, um, and look for some better, see if they have some better ones next week. So, um, but yeah, so we're just going to have peppers this week. I don't really have a lot of stuff planned for them anyway and these usually last one or two weeks for me I get a lot of questions on how I make my produce last in my refrigerator and I don't know like I literally just put the um, paper towel on the bottom I added my veggies on top and they stay good now the peppers and onions and things like that stay good for like two weeks and the cucumbers stay good for the entire week so I prep on Sunday I usually eat the rest of my cucumbers on Wednesdays or Thursdays. You guys know I love cucumbers, so I do eat them very quickly. Um, but the peppers take good for like two weeks. I keep my refrigerator on 36 degrees. I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, I keep them in my crisper drawers sometimes. Sometimes they're not in there. just depends on how full those are. Um, I have an older refrigerator, so it has these little slidey things on the crisper drawers. But I don't know what they mean because everything's worn off, so I can't tell what they mean. Um, so anyway, I don't know. I don't know how they stay fresh. I just don't ever have any issues with them. And I always use either plastic. It's whether I use my plastic containers or my glass containers, it doesn't seem to make a difference. They just last. So sorry, I can't be more help with that. Maybe your refrigerator is set too low. We were having some issues with our refrigerator freezing up, literally freezing up, and we had to tear it all apart and use a hair dryer to thaw it out. But ever since we... We changed a couple parts on there. That didn't seem to work. Then we, I read something about your refrigerator being too high or too low, you know, too cold. And so it said to turn it up to 36 degrees and maybe they would stop freezing up. And it did. We have not had the issue since. So knock on wood somewhere. I'm nowhere close to me, but knock on wood for me that that does not happen. Um, sometimes I will dice my cucumbers and slice my cucumbers. Um, but, but this week I'm just slicing them because I have hummus and I have that cottage cheese ranch dip that I made last week that I'll be using. These four plus I have carrots and celery left over from last week as well. I've got a half a container of those. So I'll go ahead and use the carrots, celery, and these cucumbers. But I can always chop these cucumbers up to throw in salads. So sometimes I dice them so I have some for salads and then slice them also. But I figure if they're in slices I can use them for dip. Now here's all my veggies. They're all ready to go. We have our cucumbers. We have our diced up peppers, our green onions, which I love to throw green onions in everything. I've been forgetting to buy them the last couple weeks, and I have missed them so, so much. And they're great on that chicken and gravy thing. Now, kind of off topic, I had this during my meal prep, and this is absolutely amazing flavor. This pineapple tangerine, oh my gosh, y'all. So once you have let your eggs natural release for five minutes, meaning 
After your five minute timer went off for steaming them, then you let it get to five minutes and that little thingy goes down. I take mine out. Now, I don't put mine in an ice bath anymore. I used to, but I didn't notice much of a difference. And our ice maker doesn't work on our refrigerator, so I have to do like cubes of ice. So I just put cold water in them and just let them sit in cold water. I have zero issue with that. Now let me show you my prep so far because I do have to get this stuff in the refrigerator. The prep up to this point only took me 35 minutes and that was including cleaning up as I went along, moving my camera around, getting everything prepped. That includes getting the chicken and gravy ready in the crock pot. So this right here y'all took me 35 minutes and I have veggies for the week, I have hard boiled eggs for the week, I have some mashed cauliflower to go with my lunches, I have the syrup for my pancakes. Okay so now Fast forward to three hours later, our chicken is done. I'm gonna go ahead and get that out and just kind of shred it up. It's so tender that it just, it took nothing. It just started just falling apart as literally as I was taking it out of my um, crock pot. But I do like to take it out of there. That way when I'm stirring the plain non-fat Greek yogurt in there, it mixes up really well. Otherwise you can get kind of chunks in there. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take all the chicken out. And this was a lot of chicken. This makes five servings about, I think they, I think other recipes I've seen that are similar to this say that they six to eight are servings, but I do generous servings because it's low points. Um, so now I'm going to add in this whole entire container of plain non-fat Greek yogurt, and this just makes it really creamy. You can actually leave this step out if you want because the gravy itself is really good, but this just adds like a creamy texture, just makes it more of a comfort meal it makes it just taste like you're just eating something so decadent and I don't know just kind of as the elevates a simple recipe that's just kind of how I feel about it so I love to add this aspect of the plain non-fat Greek yogurt and then I added in that whole can of green beans I did drain it add in that whole can of green beans now you can I've used also mixed vegetables for this that works really well I just I love green beans so much more than any other than like the package of mixed vegetables because I'm not a huge pea fan. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix that around. But yes, mixed vegetables are good in this. So you can do that too. So I'm just going to mix that around. Now I get a lot of questions all the time. How do you measure out big containers like this? Casseroles, soups, stews, like this chicken and gravy. And I'm going to show you what I do. I weigh it out. So I weigh everything out in grams whenever I have a big casserole, whenever I have um, this. Now, if you're weighing out casseroles, you'll need to know what your casserole dish weighs so you can subtract that. But with bowls, it's easy. You can just put your bowl on your scale, zero it out, so you don't have to weigh out your bowl because you've already zeroed it out. And then you just add in whatever you're cooking, your soups, your stews. If you make this chicken and gravy, which you should make this chicken and gravy, you guys, it's so good. This is also really good over rice. I do have it over rice sometimes, and I was going to make rice today, but um, I can always make that because I have some minute rice. But for now, I'm just going to do the rice, I mean the mashed cauliflower. You can also put it just over rice cauliflower too, if you want. Or you can put it over biscuits, bread, whatever you want. So you'll see here, 1,573 grams. I'll divide that by five servings and I'll get my amount. And that's how you do it, you guys. So thank you guys, as always, for taking time out of your day to watch my videos. I will have the chicken and gravy, the mashed cauliflower, and the blueberry syrup typed out down below. And I already did it, so I know I won't forget. I know I forget to link things sometimes, but I already planned ahead and got that description box already all done. So that'll be ready for you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.